Hi, my name is Jeff Hilland. I work for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I'm here representing the DMTF Redfish Forum. And today's Redfish School, we will be going over sessions, how to establish them, what they are, um, and how to remove them. So we'll do a quick overview, uh, show you the resource map, and then go through a couple of examples. So you know, what exactly are sessions and what do you need them for? Um, very few Redfish resources are unprotected. The service route at Redfish V1 and a post to the sessions collection are the two main ones that really you can get there without any kind of credential whatsoever. Um, there are very few others. There's a version object, which is slash Redfish, uh, the OData service document, dollar metadata. Um, but they're really not important for this presentation, really just getting that service route and, and establishing a session is what we're trying to do. You need to provide user credentials to the Redfish service to access all the rest of the resources, because if you don't, you get a 401 forbidden. So um, there's really two ways to do that, basic auth and session. And basic auth utilizes the authorization header following RFC 7235. That's typically a base 64 encoding of a username, a colon, followed by the password. It goes out there. That's what curl uses if you use you know, user and, and password. Um, it, it really, it's it's the equivalent of logging in and logging out each time you do an operation. And typically, logging in and logging out are some time-consuming things uh, when when going to a, a service. So you end up with some real problems if you're trying to run a script or if you're trying to, especially if you're trying to write a program, um, that'll give you extra overhead every time. You end up in instead of measuring your IOs in milliseconds, you're you're, you're going to be measuring them in seconds. So that's why we created session establishment. Instead, it uses the X auth token header, and you get this header by doing a post of your credentials to the session collection. It, you then use this token, the header, in subsequent operations. That's the equivalent of logging on. So what really is the difference between base, basic auth and sessions? Pretty much what I just went over, right? Both of them are, are going to use credentials to specify the access rights you're given for any particular resource, and they're really going to reference a user account. But um, basic auth is actually setting up an authorization, performing the operation, and then tearing down that authorized connection. And it works fine if you're doing something once in a while. You know, I'm doing a quick curl command, or I just want to go in with my browser and look at one resource. Hey, that's great. Um, but but there are services out there that see a whole bunch of, of uh, uh, basic auths in a row out there as a denial, denial of service attack. So they may actually do back off algorithms and slow you down. So it could have unintended side effects. Um, hopefully it doesn't, but you know, um, so watch out for that. Whereas sessions, that requires you to do a post to the session collection to get a token and use that token in all subsequent operations. And then you delete that session when you're done so that that uh, token that you use in the header is no longer valid for anybody to use. So that has a lot of advantages with respect to uh, operation latency. Let's go over what the resources we're talking about here in the uh, session model. You got the session service. Um, that's got a couple of properties that you might care about, such as status and timeout policy, and of course, a pointer to the sessions collection. And then the session itself is the session resource. That's the thing that you've got um, that, that really is almost a handle to your individual session. And so you delete that in order to uh, 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 revoke that X auth token. Here it is in a nutshell. It's just off the service route is a ser session service. Uh, there's a sessions collection in it with one or more sessions, or zero if there's no sessions right now. Not that you could see that, um, because seeing it would probably be a session. Um, here's the session service in a, in a nutshell. You've got all the um, normal administrative stuff up front, all the uh, add data stuff, ID name, description, status. Really, two properties in here you care about. Service enabled, of course, it should always, you know, there are services out there that may want to disable the session service. That's fine. But the timeout is the big one, you know, what's what's uh, um, the timeout? So, and then a pointer to the sessions collection. There will be one or more sessions in that collection. The individual session itself, again, has those common properties up front. I show username and password in there. Um, Username will probably be there, but password is password is only there on post. You're never going to read that back. If you read it back, I think the, the semantics inside the schema re require that it not be returned. So never return a password on, on some, when somebody does a get. So how do you create a session? First, you get Redfish v1. That's called a service route. It's got a URI and a property called sessions collection. If this is Redfish 1.6 or later, that's going to be hard-coded to Redfish v1 session service sessions. Um, so you know you can post that without even doing the get. 
if it's 1.6 or later. How do you know it's 1.6 or later? You do a get on Redfish V1, and it'll tell you the version of Redfish it supports. So either way, you're kind of stuck doing a get on Redfish V1. Um, you probably got to get there and uh, do a get on slash redfish first to ensure there's a redfish slash v1. If we ever go to v2, um, um, it, it might be there as well. Second operation is you do a post to the sessions collection. Now, technically, you traverse the schema and metadata like you would for anything else to find the appropriate definition. But session establishment, at least for username and password, it hasn't changed since 1.0 and aren't likely to. So the properties that really need to be filled out are username and password. So the JSON body of the request is brace, property name, username. You put your username in the, in the quotes. Password, put your name in the – your password in the – the quotes there too. Post that to the sessions collection, and you'll get a couple of things back. Um, uh, older implementations will require you do an OData uh, header on there and set it to v4, and it's advisable you do the content type to application JSON caret UTF-8, um, since services are allowed to reject that operation if they're not specified. Once you fill all that out in the post, your response body has a couple of things in it. Two headers that are very important: the location header and the XAuth token. The location header has the URI of the session resource, that member of the session's collection. That's what you do a delete on. And then the XAuth token in the header is that value that you use on all subsequent operations. Um, there may be a JSON body comes back. If it is, it's the session resource. If it's not, uh, you could get a 204 saying, yeah, I'm empty. Um, it's allowed. Um, but if you get a 200, it's the same thing as you'd get by doing a get, get on the URI of the location header. Um, when you're done, perform a delete operation on the URI from the location header and in order to log out, and that tears down the session. Thank you for watching. That's really all there is to session, and I hope you found this and all the Redfish tutorials helpful.